Hello, welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. This lecture will be a continuation of our discussion of suboptimal equalization techniques. Over the previous couple of lectures, we have been looking at zero forcing equalization. In zero forcing, what we do is that we try to come up with an equalization approach or filter that zeroes out all the interference or the intersymbol, uh, intersymbol components of the interference. The problem with that approach, as you saw both in the theoretical discussion as well as our GNU radio simulation, is that it can result in a significant amount of noise enhancement. This noise enhancement can prove costly, especially when you have a low signal to noise ratio and therefore, the zero forcing equalizer is not a good choice when you have very, very low signal to noise ratio. In this lecture, we are going to look at one more suboptimal equalization approach called the linear MMSC equalizer. The, here, the MMSC stands for minimum mean squared error equalizer. What we do over here is that we take a statistical approach and we try to minimize the expected squared error between the detected symbol and the transmitted symbol and that essentially gives us our equalizer. Much like you may have seen in other discussions on squared error, the use of squared error gives us an easy handle to compute the equalizer because you can essentially differentiate and set the filter coefficients to zero and an equation essentially gives you your filter coefficients. That is what we are going to look at now. <clears throat> now as the name suggests, we have to minimize the mean squared error. So this j is like uh, an objective function. The j here refers to the mean squared error. This mean squared error is a function of our filter coefficient c. c has the same meaning as earlier. c essentially corresponds to a vector containing filter coefficients. And we define the error as expectation modulus C Hermitian RK minus BK. R has the same meaning as earlier. It is essentially a grouping of the symbols that you are, uh, that you have received at the receiver. It's a vector of the same size as C. Now, if you expand the J of C, you get this particular form. I will actually show you this in more detail. Let's do it over here. So, we have C Hermitian RK minus BK. Now, BK here is a symbol. It is a complex number like, you know, QPSK symbol or something. While C and R are vectors, therefore, I give the underscore. Now, C Hermitian R can also be written as R comma C. That is also another notation that you will see sometimes elsewhere. Now, when you deal with C Hermitian R squared, one way to handle these kinds of expectations is to simply write the mod square as that into that Hermitian. Just keep in mind that this is a number, but we will still write it as conjugate or Hermitian. It's the same thing. This is equal to expectation of C Hermitian RK minus BK times C Hermitian RK minus BK whole conjugate okay, or Hermitian, it's the same thing. The, I am deliberately using Hermitian because that will give us a way by which we can swap this order of R and RK to get a convenient kind of representation. This is equal to expectation of C Hermitian RK minus BK. Now I will apply the Hermitian operator. I will get R Hermitian C minus B star because B is a number, its Hermitian is merely going to be the conjugate. Now, the Hermitian operator when you apply on C Hermitian RK is the same as conjugation. 
you can write it as C Hermitian R K the whole conjugate that will be the same as R Hermitian C you can verify that. Now if I expand this I will get C Hermitian expectation now the reason I can take C outside is because C is a fixed quantity and is not dependent on the uh, exact value of R it is a fixed filter based on the statistics but not dependent on R and B themselves. I will write this as R K R K Hermitian why because C Hermitian R R Hermitian C I can take the C Hermitian and C outside the expectation ok. Then the next I will take B and B star I will say plus mod B K star ok. The next thing I am going to do is I am going to next take the cross terms that is I am going to do C Hermitian oh I am sorry I should put an expectation here let me just address that. Okay, yeah. So, expectation mod B k square because the expectation B B is a statistical quantity because it's random symbols and we have expectations inside. Next, the cross terms. So we have plus expectation of C Hermitian R k B star minus. B k R Hermitian k C C yeah that is it ok. So, now we have these this particular cross term this C Hermitian R k B B k star minus B k R Hermitian C ok. If you now look at what, what we have on our slide essentially this is what we have written except that we have written this as 2 times real part ok. The 2 times real part comes in very uh, handy because you can essentially write this as if you see C Hermitian R k B k star the whole conjugate is B k Hermitian C k. So, I can write this as I can also put the expectation outside does not matter. It's the same thing. Now, the key idea for us is that this is J, and if you look up how to differentiate this J with respect to C, so if I write something like dou J by dou C is equal to 0, essentially I am dividing, I am differentiating with respect to the first entry of C second entry of C, third entry of C setting each to 0 uh, this is the vector notation. This is something you can check any linear algebra or matrix calculus reference. This is going to give me C Hermitian R k R k Hermitian if I now call this R ok and if I now call let, let me just write it and then you will see. Then you will get 2 times R times C ok 2 times R times C and minus we will get p is equal to 0. What is this p? Now, if you differentiate this 2 times real part of e power minus I am sorry this is 2 p 2 per 2 times real part of expectation of C Hermitian R k B star k this is again something which you can carefully perform the differentiation you can differentiate, differentiate with, respect, with respect to the real part of C ima, imaginary part of C and so on. So, what you need to do is you need to expand each entry of C as the real part and imaginary part real part and imaginary part perform the expansion differentiate with respect to the real part of the first entry, imaginary part of first entry, real part of second entry, imaginary part of second entry and write them equal to 0 and you can show that you will get this form where P is I believe there should be a conjugate I am sorry yes where P is of the form expectation B star k R k. Now, let us actually just understand this. This matrix is let us say you take a group of k entries this k cross k this k cross 1 k cross 1. So, you have to solve the equation R c equal to p and if p if your r is invertible your c 
is equal to these kinds of equations are very common in communication and signal processing okay you can show several properties that r has that make evaluating r very easy you know all those uh, you know if you look at the entries of r they have certain patterns it may be it will be of a toplitz form all those kinds of things are there r inverse p if r is invertible is going to be c now if you evaluate dou square j by dou c square you will find that you can that that, that the resulting res, the resulting numbers that you get will indicate that this c is indeed the minimum that is you are now getting at a global minima based on all values of c therefore this c is also referred to as c mmsc you can choose any filters but this c mmsc is that filter which will minimize the minimum mean squared error j so coming back over here so c hermitian r c plus mod bk square by the way we were silent about bk square we generally you know bk square is essentially expectation bk square is es i should have i should put an expect, expectation here as well expectation bk square is es that essentially doesn't depend on the realization so that the derivative with respect to c is also zero so if you differentiate you will get 2 rc minus 2p is equal to zero and r is equal to uh, expectation r r hermitian p is equal to expectation b star r k hermitian this is also called the cross cor you know it's also called the cross correlation matrix therefore the minimum mean square equalizer is c mmsc is equal to r inverse p where r is expectation r r hermitian and p is expectation b star r k now if you remember our model from earlier we had this particular structure where we grouped several symbols together and we were able to write in fact we grouped five of them together for our running example and we were able to write r k as u b k plus w k now for this u b k for w k let us evaluate what these quantities are so i am going to write r k here this b is a vector this b is a vector column vector containing you know five elements if you remember sorry three elements if you recall uh, in the running example the u had five rows three columns and b had essentially b k minus 1 b k and b k plus 1 that's what we had now let us evaluate r that is expectation of r k r k hermitian remember we are assuming that the processes are white sense stationary and this will result in the by de by definition u bk bk hermitian u hermitian plus wk will have give me i'll just write it as cw that is expectation w w hermitian plus the cross terms but the cross terms are zero because we are assuming that wk and bks are uncorrelated we will assume that the wks we will assume that the wks and bks are uncorrelated so that means that this essentially simplifies to r is equal to remember u does not depend on statistics u times and what is expectation of bk bk hermitian expectation of bk bk hermitian will have in the diagonal entry is have bk square bk minus 1 square bk square bk plus 1 square in modulus the off diagonals will be bk bk minus 1 bk bk plus 1 since we assume iid signaling it will be es times i so i'm just going to write it as es times i where es is what expectation of mod bk square u es is a number plus cw so i can also write this as es times u u hermitian plus cw where es is the signal energy now if you look at what we have in the slide that's essentially what we have written over here now how do we write this as the second part for the second part all i do is i can just expand this as column wise so if you remember how matrix multiplication works u u hermitian can be written as first column first column outer product the second column second column of outer product and so on so i can write this as
which is exactly what we have over here. Similarly, my P Now BK, remember RK has, RK is essentially UBK plus WK, okay. And in this BK, you have three entries, okay. You have three entries and you have only that one entry corresponding to the BK. So in other words, this is actually equal to expectation of, now if you substitute this particular quantity over here, the WK goes away because WK and BK are uncorrelated. Now if I write U times BK, u times only bk term survives, this should be star sorry, the rest all terms go to 0, the rest ter of the terms go to 0, that means my p is only going to pick that column of u that corresponds to bk, so this is going to be We'll call it u0, the column that corresponds to bk. That is, think of it this way. The columns of u correspond to each entry of b, bk minus 2, bk minus 1, bk, bk plus 1, bk plus 2. Only that column that corresponds to bk is going to get picked, right? So that is essentially what is happening over here. Now, the next thing we have is, if we now put this together, we are going to get our C M M S C to be equal to, okay, remember it is R inverse P, so I am going to write it as this is great, okay. Now I am going to play a small trick, E S is a number, I can take it inside by just doing 1 upon E S, so this can be written as. Okay, so, UU Hermitian CW upon ES times U0. Now if your uh, CW is essentially identity times N0 by 2, then it has a nice form. Here is the interesting part. The key difference between zero forcing and uh, MMSE is that this 1 upon ES term essentially weights your equalization filter. Basically weights meaning it applies a factor depending on the noise. Let us actually just play a small uh, kind of mind game. If your CW which is the noise is its entry is like its variance is much much larger than ES. Then what is it saying? If you invert this matrix CW upon ES you are going to get something which is very close to 0. So if you are in a very very low SNR regime then the problem is that the CMMSE says Okay, I am just going to zero out your signal, you are not going to get any information. However, if your CW is, suppose you are in a very high SNR regime, then your CW is going to be really, really close to zero. In that case, there is an important realization. This approaches ZF as, let us say, CW or let us say, SNR tends to infinity. Okay. Now, this may be a little confusing as to why, this is something we will see when we do it in the GNU radio as well, but the intuition is that the CW's entries are much smaller than ES. Then this UU Hermitian whole inverse turns to the pseudo inverse which is exactly what we had in the case of the, in the case of your zero forcing, it will become that and this is something we will show numerically also. The key however is that this MMSE offers you a slider kind of, I mean intuitively it offers you a slider that is what slider is picked automatically as to how much weightage you give to the received signal. If the SNR is high, it will just do the same thing as zero forcing. If the SNR is low, it will say okay fine, just do not invert the channel blindly because then you are going to amplify the noise. We will strike a trade off where you try to get the minimum mean squared solution, maybe that works better, that is the hope. Well, let us just see how that works. So this essentially is what we get, this is what we just showed. Now 
In what sense is it better? In the sense that the signal to interference ratio SIR is maximized for the linear MMSE equalizer. In other words, in our notation, this is the signal to interference ratio. How? Let's check. So if you look at this picture, or maybe I will just, uh, yeah, I'll just take this picture. Okay. Let's just take this one. Alright. So now over here, right, let us write this in two parts. This is equal to ES times ah, let us not okay, let us not do this. Okay, I'm sorry. Let us actually take the original, let's take the original signal. So you have Rk is equal to U Bk plus Wk. Now let us write this in two parts. This is going to be Bk, notice that I am writing Bk without the underscore which means this is that number times U0 plus summation over J such that j is not equal to 0, bj uj plus wk. Now blindly speaking, this corresponds to our signal power, so to speak, right? Because this corresponds to how much signal you are essentially going to get. Now if you do C MMSE Hermitian RK, I am going to get bk times C MMSE Hermitian U0 plus summation over J such that J is not equal to 0 BJ C MMSE Hermitian UJ plus C MMSE Hermitian WK. Now over here, just keep a note, this corresponds to signal and this corresponds to, let me not write it that way, interference due to the neighboring symbols plus noise. So if I want to compute the signal to noise ratio, I must take the variance of the, I mean the essentially the expectation square of the first part divided by the expectation square of the second part. So if I want to write the expression for the SIR, the signal to interference ratio, I am going to just write this as mod and if I take expectation, I expectation BK square is going to be ES. So I am just going to write ES times magnitude C MMSE Hermitian u0 square divided by again this mod bj square is going to give me es and bj times bj plus 1 bj minus 1 bj minus 2 all have cross covariance 0. So if you carefully write this out you will get es summation j such that j not equal to 0 magnitude c mmse hermitian uj square plus now C MMSE Hermitian WK if you write the expectation of that square you can write the C Hermitian MMSE WK plus WK her, times WK Hermitian times C Hermitian. So this you can show easily will be C MMSE Hermitian CW C MMSE that is it. So this is the signal to interference ratio so to speak and if CW goes to 0, you can see that the signal to interference ratio just becomes the ratio of these but remember what happens in the case of zero forcing? 
In the case of zero forcing, your C was chosen in such a way that C Hermitian times UJ for all the other U's was zero, right? Because you chose the C that aligned with U zero but not with the other U's. So this inner product was zero in the case of zero forcing. In the case of MMAC, it is not zero, but you want to essentially take into account the impact of the noise also. <coughs> so this is the signal to interference ratio, which I have written over here as well. The C should be C MMAC. I have used the angle bracket notation, otherwise it is the same. This signal to interference ratio is maximized when you choose CSC MMSC and among all the linear equalizers, I am not showing this, but among all the linear equalizers, it can be shown that this C MMSC maximizes the signal to interference ratio. It turns out that minimizing the mean squared error is the same as maximizing the signal to interference ratio. Now, <clears throat> the other thing is when SNR goes to infinity, then the MMSE equalizer becomes the ZF equalizer. Now intuitively it makes sense which I just discussed with you because of the fact of that those inner products uh, if your you know C Hermitian CWC is essentially close to zero, you can choose the C that orthogonalizes uh, with respect to others and just has inner product with respect to U0 and the signal to interference ratio becomes you know essentially infinity. But <clears throat> this is intuitive. We can also just show numerically also that this works and we will do that in the next lecture also. Now one aspect that is an extension of these techniques is the concept of adaptive equalization. See in the case of practical systems, right, the channel impulse response or frequency response whichever way you look at it changes with time. That is, let us say you have your phone and you are essentially moving around, the environment around you changes which means that the channel or the impulse response that your phone sees essentially starts changing. So that means that you may require frequent retraining or recalibration. An alternative is that you can actually rather than you know just retrain, get the channel, use it, then the channel goes bad, retrain, get the channel. An alternative to this is that can we find some way to track this channel. Now this tracking the channel is something where you learn a little bit about the changes in the channel as you go on. So for example, as you are walking while taking a call with your friend, the phone essentially starts just learning the changes in the channel as opposed to learning it afresh. This kind of approach is called an adaptive approach. It can either be training based where the base station or the transmitter sends some information to your phone or to the receiver using which it can find the changes in the channel or it can be blind. Blind means if the receiver knows only what data is being received but just does not what let us say what modulation or what uh, you know what kind of time what data rate it is but does not know the exact sequence which is there there is no training it can still try to find out what the signal is. The adaptive approaches can be either training based or blind there is a good mix of both in practical systems you can check those out. Some examples of these are the so called LMS or least mean squares uh, algorithm then there is recursive least squares and then there is something called decision feedback equalizer. All of these build on top of the uh, equalization technique that we have just discussed so far and these can essentially be uh, employed to not just equalize the channel but continuously adapt the equalization so as to improve the performance and not necessarily be stuck at you know one particular uh, channel and then retrain and so on. So they are very very efficient and used in several standards as well. So to summarize our discussion of equalization, so equalization is necessary whenever your impulse response affects the symbol detection. Now the optimal strategy is to use the maximum likelihood sequence detection but this may be prohibitively complex because you know when you have a very very large number of samples on which you want to essentially start detecting, the exponential search is just impossible. Of course as you saw the Witterby algorithm signifies sorry simplifies the uh, evaluation significantly but again you may or may not be able to implement the Viterbi algorithm because that also requires tracking of state, having some channel related uh, you know uh, changes and all those kinds of issues exist. So the up one approach to not have not do the optimal thing but hope that it works is to use a suboptimal approach. In this case of course you can use zero forcing MMSC or a host of other approaches to perform the equalization. They are much simpler to implement than the Viterbi algorithm but there is a trade off because you will suffer in terms of performance especially if you have a in the lower SNR regime these will not perform very well when compared to the 
optimum maximum likelihood sequence estimation approach. Finally, <coughs> adaptive equalization is at an extension of all these techniques wherein rather than just train learn the channel once, you essentially have an approach where you train and then when the channel changes you try to learn the changes in an incremental manner. It's much more efficient, much more effective because you can just learn on the go as opposed to stop, train, redo, stop, train, redo. And these, uh, a combination of these are used in several standards and implementations as well, many of which you are using every day. So this was our discussion on equalization. In the next lecture, we will implement the max minimum mean squared error equalizer on GNU radio and see the differences between zero forcing and then move on to other topics such as OFDM, wireless and so on. Thank you.